everybody, Tufla here from Lost in Translation, home of the LitCraft mod pack. You can find us on the Feed the Beast launcher under the third party tab using the pack code LitCraft. I'd like to thank everybody for checking us out today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, comment below. As always, any links used in this video will be down in the description, so feel free to check those out as well. Today we're going to be going over mechanism fusion reactor setups. I love this mod. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. Aside from big reactors and computer craft, this is probably my favorite mod that we have in our pack. Um, the great thing about this, especially the energy producing side, mechanisms is huge, but the energy producing side is all based around actual working theory that we're trying to achieve right now based on fusion reaction. Of course, fusion reaction isn't something that we can achieve in real life quite yet. It takes more energy to contain a fusion reaction than it does to actually output. So fusion think the sun fission think a nuclear bomb okay so that's the difference between the two F fission is what you're going to see in big reactors fusion is what you're going to see in mechanism the great thing about it is, is that he's using actual real world fuels that we're thinking are going to be used to sustain this reaction which is heavy water or d2o also known as 2h2o which is um, light element isotopes of hydrogen deuterium and tritium let me rephrase that. They are light element isotopes of hydrogen. Okay, that is deuterium and tritium. I don't want you guys to to think I'm an idiot here. So Aiden Brody is actually the guy that created this mod. Um, he did an outstanding job. Uh, you can see right here in front of us. This is like the basic setup. Um, I had, I had, I. Had, tell everybody you guys need to go check Aiden Brody out he also created an uh, iPhone app called I believe it's called Wordsy that you can get on the iPhone store um, it's just it's real smart kid not even out of high school and he's creating this this stuff it's awesome so anyway um, I'm gonna go on ahead and kickstart this process here let me get that turned on let me get that turned on so we can start sucking in some stuff okay so, as you can see, everything lit up all of a sudden. Um, this is what we have going on. Here's the basics of creating your DT fuel for your fusion reactor. So, we've got a lithium source, and we have a heavy water source. And, of course, we have a power source. So, going into the Rody Concentrator, this is my only beef with this mod, is you don't condensate. <laughs> anything you condense it to make it into a liquid and you expand it to turn it into a gas I don't think decondensating is a word but anyway there's two modes in this you have uh, condensating which is how you turn something into a liquid and then you have decondensating which is making something into a gas well obviously we have we're taking liquid lithium and turning it into a gaseous state at this point we're gonna pump that gaseous lithium into a solar neutron activator which using the power of the sun we're going to be able to then take the uh, sorry we're going to then be able to take the lithium and we're going to turn that into tritium okay tritium is the first ingredient in creating dt fuel tritium is in this side you see it's just trickling on in there because it's not going to be very fast so why don't i show you something about upgrading these machines you can see here we can actually upgrade it down here it tells you what upgrades are supported speed and energy um, speed you can you can use a total of eight of them all you gotta do is put them in here and you'll notice it starts loading them on in and then energy of course if we look at the descriptions here increases speed increases energy efficiency so honestly I'm not really all that worried about it but since I've been talking long enough I can go on ahead and toss the energy in there anyway but I mean good enough for government work so now you'll notice that the tritium is pumping in a lot quicker before it was just like one a second and now it's up to like closer to 20 so it's pumping in a lot faster so we got our tritium now the next thing we're gonna do is heavy water and I'm gonna show you guys how to make heavy water here in a couple minutes but we got heavy water going into an electrolytic separator that's going to output if I uh, change this to dumping excess you'll notice that we're gonna make oxygen and then we're gonna make deuterium the deuterium's coming out of this side and it's being pumped right on in here but this is important you're gonna be using oxygen later on so you're gonna want to store that somehow I would recommend taking your oxygen out running it through a uh, condensentrator 
and then storing it in a liquid state. Um, you can also use this in Galactocraft where you can actually use a Tesseract to pump your liquid oxygen up into space and then decondensate it again to use it in its gaseous state. So, um, yeah, keep that. But for now, we're going to just dump it. Um, so now we've got our deuterium and we've got our tritium and that is going to be turned into DT fuel. So, as you see here, I've got a rather elaborate setup. Um, this is basically just doing what you see right there. Um, over here, I've got, actually, you know what? Let me show you the water setup because that's the one part I didn't show you. And then I'm also going to show you how you get brine. So over here, this massive thing right here is actually all revolving around two parts. The first part is the electric pump which just pumps water. The second part is putting in a filter that gives you heavy water. Now, of course, I'm pumping all that into a Tesseract. And then this right here, I'm using transfer nodes from, from extra utilities just to pump regular water, which is going into my tanks over here. Now, what I have is, is I have a total of, what is it, 25 brine tanks here, because I produce a massive amount of brine. Um, what you're doing is you're taking water in, and then you're using the so solar evaporator controller um, and depending on the biome is going to depend your multiplier I'm that's why I built this in an all-day world from RF tools using a desert biome to give me the 2x multiplier because this thing will cool down overnight if it's not day so you'll stop producing you'll use the same tower to produce both brine and lithium so this is taking brine right and then I'm storing it over there in its liquid form to give me a buffer and then these five towers on the opposite side, these are brine towers as well. These five towers here produce my lithium. See, it's full of brine, outputting lithium. Well, right now it's not outputting anything because I'm not using lithium at the moment because I'm full of DT fuel. And then this is my lithium. You can see, like I said before, I'm storing oxygen here. Here's where I'm going to put hydrogen chloride, and here's where I'm going to put sulfuric acid. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be going over 5x ore generation. That'll become more important then. So you can see right here, I've got my my uh, tritium stored. Here I've got my deuterium stored, and here I've got some DT fuel stored. The DT fuel is just so that if I want to use it directly. Uh, before we leave here, though, I'm going to show you this. I'm taking that tritium or taking the deuterium, just like you saw over there, and pumping it on in to create my DT fuel. Right there. See, it's being combined. So that's how you do that. And while we're here, we're going to go on ahead and grab an empty hollerum, because we're going to need that. And we're going to stick it right here in the, chem the chemical infuser, and it's going to charge it for us, because we're actually going to need this in a few. So on to the, the cool part. We're now going to actually create our fusion reactor. Um, this is my home world. Um, it's kind of it's like a moon is basically how I designed it but basically what we're gonna do is we're going to take our fusion reactor and at some point we'll do a tutorial on this as well this is a draconic evolution battery you can see that this thing holds uh, 2.14 tera RF so this is where we're gonna be storing everything I'm gonna come on over here this is gonna be it's kinda of barren here because we just started the server up and I haven't had an opportunity to make all the tutorial things that I'm going to be making. So this right here, this setup is how we're going to charge our initial reaction. Um, I have a lever on here. This is what turns the lasers on and off. As you can see, the lasers turn on. If I flick it, the lasers turn off. And then basically, we're focusing all of these lasers into one single amplifier, and this stores our energy. And then that's on a lever. I'm not going to flick that. It takes a little bit of time. but Basically, what we need is a lot of energy to kickstart this initial reaction. So how do we build our reactor? Pretty simple. Check this out. So basically, we're going to make a pattern that looks kind of like a star, just like this. Now, you see this pattern? On all six sides, you have to have this pattern, and it has to be this material, this reactor frame. Now, the middle cross, you can put whatever you want. For us, we're actually going to put two 
reactor ports. These reactor ports can handle both gas and energy. This is going to take in our uh, tritium. This is going to take in our deuterium. And this port is going to outport our energy, or export, sorry. And then I'm going to toss in some glass, just because I like to see what's going on up here. Now, here I'm going to go on ahead and create my cross frame section. I like to make the cross frame out of glass. This is the internal part of your frame. And you'll notice that I'm leaving plenty of room along the outsides to make my um, to make my central point. This is where the actual laser focus is going to go. We'll go over that here in a second. And now I'm going to fill the frame. right on down here do this as you can see the outward facing part is all frame that's so you can contain everything it has to be frame you these blocks on the outside cannot be made of anything but frame so now we've got that done and this part I'm gonna just put glass and we're gonna stick our frame in here and we're pretty much done. So before I toss the reactor controller in here, I'm going to explain a couple things. So like I said before, I've got my ports down there. There are other ports that come with this, like logic uh, ports and whatnot, but I'm not going to be using that right now. So we've got that, and then here we've got our laser focus matrix. That is where the laser gets shot into here, creating our reaction. Now, you're going to see this thing pop red. That means that it is complete. If you click on the controller, you can see that it is formed. If we get rid of something, you'll see it is incomplete. So, that's a little cue to let you know that this is working. And here, we're going to toss our charged hollerim. This is, see there's a little hole there. That laser is going to shoot into the hole and, oh, I just noticed that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll tell you what, man. This is some beautiful stuff, uh, Minecraft is. Uh, if, in case if anybody wants to know, the reason why everything is circular except for that because it's not in the texture pack, I'm using a texture pack called uh, Life HD. Um, I'll put a link to that below. But So if you want to know why my stuff looks a little bit different, that's why. So I digress. Back to the controller. So that's going to shoot into the hollerim. The laser is going to shoot into the hollerim, and this is going to kickstart our reaction. Now before we do that, I need to connect the fuel. So I'm going to grab myself a pressurized tube. I'm going to connect the fuels. You can see right now it's pumping it in. And then I'm going to connect my power output. Let's go into the battery. And you can see now there's no heat. This is, this is what is going to start heating up once we do actually shoot the laser in. And then you can see deuterium is ready to go. I'm going to set my injection rate to 2 because that is the minimum injection rate is 2. So I'm going to set my injection rate to 2. Hit enter. I'm now at 2. This is going to set us up with uh, 500 kilojoules per tick is going to be coming in. So, looking at that, sorry I had to change my channel real quick in TeamSpeak so nobody would pop in and interrupt us. So, right now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to shoot this laser into there. Final check. Fuel check. Output check. Hollerim check. Let's set the time to day check. <laughs> so we can see everything. Actually, you know what? For this part, uh, so you can see the glowing stuff on the inside. Uh, we got our controller, and we got our hollerim, and we have our fuel injection rate set. So we are good to go. So all we need to do now is flip the switch. Pay attention to that hole and watch what happens inside. Laser shoots and bam! Lights up like a tree. We're going to go on ahead and I'm going to flip this on and turn on my test rack so I can start charging this up again. If we look up here, you'll see the lasers are going in and this is starting to store gigajoules. So, here we go. That's it, guys. We got our fusion reactor set up. We're producing energy. If we take a quick look, that setup that I had out there, the reason why it's so big is because I have to produce a lot of energy in order to keep the RF tools dimensions running that I run for other people. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and crank this up to 25. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you what happens if you crank it up to 99. Um, I'm assuming at some point he's going to build in catastrophic failure. That's not a thing yet. But you can see we're producing almost 25 megajoules per tick. I mean, that's insane. So we're going to drop this down to 25, and you'll notice now we're producing 6.25. If we look at our heat output, you can see how what our plasma, our case temperature is, and this is where our uh, storage buffer is at. It's going to slowly climb as it's transmitting over there to the battery. So let's hop on over to the battery, and we'll verify that we are, in fact, outputting some power. If we take a look over here, see those particles? Uh, we'll go over this in a draconic evolution video, but these particles mean that's the stream, the direction of the stream. And you'll notice that this is quickly filling up with RF. So there you go. That's it, guys. Uh, draconic evolution battery. We've got ourselves a fusion reactor going over here. It's a thing of beauty. Like I said before, all links are going to be down in the description. I've got a link to uh, Aiden's website for mechanism. I got the Life HD texture pack link down there if you want to see. I also invite everybody to check out our Patreon. Um, this stuff is made possible by our donors, otherwise it's all paid out of pocket. So I would appreciate if you guys check that out if you want to come play on our server, which is play.litcraft.net, which is free to play. Like I said, donors are are just to help us out but it, otherwise it's all free to play as is the mod pack so again thank you for checking out our youtube channel feel free to head over to litcraft.net for more information about the litcraft mod pack and the lost in translation community of course don't forget to like subscribe and comment below and as always guys go out and have fun punching blocks